Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto. Today I'm going to go over a few things uh, regarding peroneal tendon pain. This is a question we get a lot in the office and uh, I want to go over a few things uh, for you. So I hope you can all see this. Uh, we're going to talk about specifically uh, an accessory bone that's involved in peroneal tendon pain, a peroneal tendon tear, and then uh, a subluxing tendon for a peroneal tendon. I want to start out and show a little bit of the anatomy. The peroneal tendon, there's the brevis and the longus. The brevis comes down and inserts right here at the base of the fifth metatarsal right here. That's where a lot of people have this pain uh, and a little bit of a tear right in here. The peroneus longus comes underneath, and a lot of times the longus is where an accessory bone can develop. Uh, certain people can, can have a, a split tear on the side or a tear down here, and then other people can have actually a tendon that kind of pops out of the side of the ankle. So let's look into this. Um, what are the diagnostic exams that I do? I, I typically do, um, to start out with an x-ray, if I'm concerned if there is an accessory bone or something else going on with that, you can see the accessory bone in the bottom. And then if that doesn't show much, I'll tend to go to an ultrasound. With an ultrasound, I can see if there's any, um, this black area would be some type of a, an effusion or swelling around the tendon. Sometimes there can be tendonitis or tenosynovitis in that area. Um, here's an example, once again, uh, around uh, some changes to the, the tendon. So the tendon should look nice in kind of black and white, like this, more white than black. But if it looks kind of different in the middle, you can kind of see that there might be some tears in that area. And this is an example of an MRI with some changes. So a lot of times these other things are needed uh, for treatment, uh, especially if surgery is going to be required. Here's an example of a couple of osperoniums. Basically, it's an extra bone that's found in the peroneus longus. This a lot of times uh, can be found on x-rays. A lot of people don't have any pain. So if there's no pain, you don't have to do anything. If there is pain in that area, there are some treatments, uh, certainly trying an injection or, or, or um, shockwave therapy or other types of things can be helpful for this uh, to immobilize it. Um, there's also a couple of other uh, reasons for the tendon tear. One would be like a, a low-lying um, muscle belly. So the muscle belly, if it's uh, further down uh, towards the ankle, that can sometimes get impinged and, and cause pain. That can be noted on uh, an MRI or an ultrasound. Also, in, surgically, you can find that. And then um, there can also be a tear. You can see the example of the tear here that can happen to the tendon, a tear here that can happen to the tendon. Uh, a subluxing peroneal tendon is where the, the tendon actually goes outside of the uh, malleoli region. So basically it pops out. You can see here it kind of pops out. And then uh, how do we treat this? So um, the, my first line of therapy, let's say there is tendonitis. And even if there is a tear, I will go right to um, shockwave therapy. Um, even before a cortisone injection, because a cortisone can sometimes weaken it. Um, this is going to be done with some immobilization. We'll get to the immobilization in a little bit, but I will start with this uh, on that area. And for a lot of people, that can reduce a lot of the symptoms and help uh, spur and speed up healing for patients. This, once again, isn't uh, isolated, but it is done with other types of treatments. Um, patients can also do icing. They can do uh, contrast baths. Um, once again, you wouldn't ice in the bottom. You'd ice uh, on, on the area where it hurts you. You can take an anti-inflammatory. If you are not doing the shockwave therapy, you can do an anti-inflammatory. A cortisone injection can sometimes be used. I like to do it with ultrasound so I can put it right in the area that I need to. And I'll tend to immobilize someone with a, with a, with a walking boot or some type of a, a, a soft cast called an uniboot or something like that to immobilize them. You may do that even before you put uh, a cortisone. I try to avoid cortisone just to not weaken the area, but if there's no other choice, and patients uh, are having a lot of pain and there's no tear, there's, a, there's risks of causing a tear with the cortisone. So once again, I try to uh, shy away from that unless it's, unless it's needed, okay? Um, I also have people do um, a lot of uh, soft tissue work uh, because the tendons on the, on the, on the peroneals, they can be tightened. And so I have people do physical therapy with the Graston technique. This is showing the Achilles, but can also be done on the peroneals. I'll have them do either uh, some type of home therapy with these trigger point tools or something similar. Basically, they're gonna roll out the peroneals and kind of loosen all the muscles in the back of the legs. You can use, this is a yoga block with a ball. You can do a foam roller. This is a rolling stick. All these are helpful. Um, there'll be a link underneath if you wanna learn more about how to do that. You can do some types of stretching. Stretching doesn't really really great for the peroneals unless some of the other tendons are hurting as well or tight. Uh, stabilizing the foot with a nice stable shoe. You can also do an ankle brace. Sometimes an ankle brace can work temporarily. You have to get an x-ray to make sure there's no high arched foot. A lot of times a cavus foot or a high arched foot can cause that. A walking boot, if it's really painful, can be helpful uh, just to rest it. 
uh, if, if it, it's been kind of a, a short period of time, if it's been a really long period of time, that's where I'll go right to some of the advanced therapies. Um, if someone has a high arched foot or a low arched foot, uh, more commonly we see ankle sprains and peroneal tendon injuries in the higher arched foot, we would do an orthotic for them. And then there are some advanced treatments, once again, the shockwave, which we talked about, uh, in conjunction with amnio, if it's been a long time, let's say over six months, uh, I will do that, or platelet rich plasma, or sometimes surgery is needed as well. I'm going to go over this last slide. This is a, a peroneal tendon pain checklist. I like to use checklists because it makes it easier. So if you're seeing another doctor, you can kind of look at what you've done and what are some of the possibilities. So for imaging, start with an x-ray, then I'll move to an ultrasound or an MRI next. To repair and heal it, I like to do shockwave. Once again, it's going to work if there's a possibility of a tear, uh, tenus synovitis around the tendon, pain in the area. Um, that, in conjunction with amnio, can be helpful. You can do the, an ultrasound to determine that. If there is a frank, really big tear, and you've tried all these things, then you may have to go right to surgery. If you're just, if it's been a short period of time that you've had it, I would put them into a, like a walking boot and then try icing, anti-inflammatories. If nothing's really working, even after shockwave, I might do a cortisone, one cortisone injection. Um, if the boot isn't too cumbersome, that walking boot, then I would switch them to like an ankle brace and then do stretching, physical therapy, home therapy. And once it starts to feel better, then you could go into a supportive shoe or a custom orthotic. Um, once again, an, an ankle brace is used as a step down from the walking boot. And if, if they have a really bad, unstable ankle, then you might want to do an ankle foot orthotic. I didn't show a picture of that. And a compression sleeve basically is just like a compression stock that, stocking that can help. If there's pain for a long period of time, surgery might be needed or a second opinion. Maybe that's where we're looking at this for a second opinion. Hope this is helpful. I'm going to put some resources at the bottom of this video uh, about um, some of those stretching exercises, uh, information about shockwave if you've never heard about that, or some other types of treatments that you might find helpful with this. Okay. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're going to find a few links here I'd like you to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.